time. I tell you, doesn't listen anymore. A lot of students, not all of them, let's not completely uh, uh, write off all uh, young people right now. Of course, there are many who would love to be able to listen to debate and hear views that uh, don't agree with their own. Maybe they might change their views if they heard different views. But yet again, we hear tales of more and more people who want to speak out on certain issues, contentious issues, yes, who are being shut down, people walking out. The latest is Simon Fanshaw. Uh, he is the founder of Stonewall, uh, one of the co-founders of Stonewall, the gay rights organisation, and author of The Power of Difference. And he, on Friday night, was uh, uh, supposed to be giving a talk at a college in the University of Cambridge. And once again, we had protests from students claiming to be trans activists, saying that his views were so offensive and so awful they couldn't possibly listen. Well, let's talk to Simon Fanshaw about it. I'm delighted to say he joins us right now. Good morning to you. Hello. Thank Good you morning. very thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um Pleasure. this is one of the strangest things about the trans rights debate, particularly where it steps on the toes of in the rights and safety of women and it also also gay people, that the people like you who've been at the forefront of of equality and civil rights battles for particularly for the minority you know, gay people. That, that you and, and others um, uh, who've campaigned with, with Stonewall and others uh, are, are actually now seen as the enemy because you don't have what are regarded as the correct views on trans issues. Tell us what happened on Friday night. Well, I think it goes a lot wider than the trans question, actually. I think this is a, 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 a feature of current political debate where things are so partisan and so, you know, uh, split that actually disagreement is seen as hostility. So what happened was I was asked to go to Gonville and Keys College at Cambridge, and I was asked to give a talk uh, about how diversity, I run a, a, a business that, you know, helps people, organisations to diversify their talent. So I was asked to come and talk about my book, The Power of Difference, and about how the power of difference, the idea of diversity, is absolutely a core part of the mission of a university. And that actually the exchange of ideas lies at the heart of what you're doing in a university, that universities are essentially about the discovery of truth, not a truth, but the idea of truth through knowledge and giving opportunity to people. So that was the idea. So I showed up. Firstly, it was sold out when it wasn't sold out, because one of the tactics that people use is they buy tickets, they don't turn up. Mm. It, something interesting happened on the way between, they very kindly gave us supper, and myself and uh, uh, the, you're, you're asked to have a co-respondent or a respondent. Um, and I chose somebody who lives in Cambridge, somebody called Jackie Gavin, who started the Agenda Network in the civil service. She's a woman who transitioned 30 years ago. And she and I were walking through the courtyard towards the meeting, and we saw a young woman with a trans flag. And so I went up to her and went, oh, what's happening? You know, this is exciting. She said, oh, they've asked this real trans folk to come and speak, and then they've got some trans woman who's totally rejected by the trans community and i'm not even parodying what she said totally rejected by the trans community and so on and so forth and i said well hello i'm simon <laughs> this is jackie at which point she looked embarrassed and then i said tell me and tell jackie what i have said or she has said that's transphobic and she said well is a trans woman a woman and i said well why didn't you ask jackie and then I said, I think it's complicated. No, it's not. It's totally, it's a yes, no question. Now, what was disappointing about this was a number of things. Number one, she hadn't read anything I'd written and she wasn't prepared to listen to the experience of a person who had transitioned. Well, that's because she you're transphobic. <laughs> well, it, it was just, what it, I, it, you know, you find this in relation to a whole range of debates. You find men not listening to women. You find uh, anti-racism campaigners not listening to other people's different views about race. You find it all over at the moment. And it's this fundamental lack of curiosity. What is depressing particularly, I think, at universities is that's the point of a university. Yeah. And I'm sure, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you're around my age range, Simon. And I, I mean, I said when I was at university, the idea How that you... you? <laughs> that you would, at 55... The, I'm 66. They, well, you're looking wonderful for it. But but the thing, the idea that when I was at uni, or I'm sure when you were at uni, that, that that someone would be a speaker at a college event or a university, but whatever whatever event it was, would who would come and have a different viewpoint. The idea that you would protest that, say they shouldn't be allowed to speak, that you would try and stop others hearing it, would be bizarre. I mean, people would have looked at you like you were insane because, of course, well, you, you could go, you can you can go along and say I disagree with you, and here's why. But you would never try and stop them from speaking, and that's well, there was a, that's there was a really thing, interesting letter written the other day. There was an incident on March the 9th at Stanford Law School in the States, and a, uh, a, 
a Republican judge was asked to come and speak to a student society. And there were a load of students in Did you say Republican? You mean political party Republican, just to clarify. Political yes. party Republican. Yep. And so there were a bunch of students in there who barracked this person from the very moment they walked in the room. Then one of the university administrators stood up. But instead of saying, hang on a second, you've got to listen to him and then let's argue, she then started uh, uh, criticising the judge. And it was a it was a stooshy. It, it it didn't go well. I think the meeting eventually happened, and I should say the one that I was at the other day did eventually happen, yeah. but with a much reduced audience. The point that was really interesting was the dean of Stanford Law wrote this fantastic letter, which is well worth everybody reading. It's ten pages. It's legally argued, but she makes a fundamental point in the middle of it, which is that protest is absolutely part of the culture of debate and argument. Disruption is not. And she also makes the point about context. So if you're standing in a field at a huge rally and you've got a bullhorn, well, then that's fine and you're shouting slogans. But if you're in a room, actually, no. So she said, if you were sitting there with a poster that had your view, silently protesting, great. But what annoyed me the other day was the the refusal to listen. So when I yeah. stood up and was introduced, a whole bunch of these young people walked out, for instance, and they had a look of absolute sort of entitled pleasure on their faces for walking out. And I thought, no, 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 the pleasure should be the discussion. And, and you know, I was there with somebody who has transitioned, and Jackie and I do have shades of difference and i don't know the answer to all these questions but, but, but this i is, want to find them well exactly and this is the thing and the idea that you should try and change people's opinions that's what you should seek to do or listen to those opinions and maybe think oh do you know what actually i hadn't thought of that that's a fair point and maybe change your opinion but the debate these days seems to be you know i mean you're you know it's the latest to be called this you know jk rowling onwards everyone you know you're a transphobe you're a bigot you're a racist you're a homophobe and that's you know i, I get all of those and you just think but you're not even listening to anything I say and when you say as you did to this to the person outside tell me something that I have said that is transphobic you kind of don't get any response because often they don't know just finally because we haven't got much time um how do we change this because I think I think that again right to protest we've been talking about that all morning with the uh, anti-monarchist group republic but but also the right the right the right to stand up for your views to be able to express your views whatever they are and even if they're someone's views that I find utterly horrific and completely disagree with but i would defend people's rights to give those views because we can defeat bad ideas with good ideas how do we get back to having a debate in a civil way where we use argument and fact and reason and morality to make our point rather than just people throwing words at people and just calling well, them I, names okay so i think the way my understanding of politics is very deep in in the way in which stone will operate and how we manage to win round big alliances of people across the British public around this idea that actually it was unfair to treat people, a particular group of people, in a discriminatory way under the law. What politics does when it works well is it creates big alliances in the middle and it isolates the extremes. What's happening now is the extremes are isolating the middle. And unfortunately, I think that we have got to go back to isolating the extremes. The, most people in Britain want a decent discussion about race, about feminism, about trans issues, about gay issues, about yeah. immigration. They want a proper discussion so we reach good solutions. So I think we have to stand up and say, we take responsibility for what we say. We will argue, and if we're wrong, we will change our minds. I will stay open in my mind, but we will build a, brick, a bigger alliance in the middle. But we actually now cannot have a dialogue with people who will not speak. And we need to stop that and appeal to people in the middle and say, look, everybody, we all... So the master of Gonville and Keys needs to say to those students, actually, that is unacceptable. Absolutely. The vast majority of people and students at Cambridge want to exchange yeah. ideas. And these are supposedly, Simon, our brightest and best. When they're ruling over us and they won't allow any debate, I think we should all be worried. Simon Fanshawe, pleasure to have your company. He's co-founder of Stonewall. He's also author of The Power of Difference. Uh, 9.46 is the time.